The Rape of the Lock Canto 1 Alexander Pope Luarum, Belinda, Tos Violari Capillos. Sejuvit, Hoc Presibus Meturbus Tus. Marshall, Epigrams 12.84 What dire offense from amorous causes springs, what mighty contests rise from trivial things, I sing this verse to Carol, Muse. Is due, this, even Belinda may vouchsafe to view, slight is the subject, but not so the praise, if she inspire, and he approve my lays. Say what strange motive, goddess, could compel a well-bred lord to assault a gentle bell? Oh say what stranger cause, yet unexplored, could make a gentle bell reject a lord? In tasks so bold, can little men engage, and in soft bosoms dwells such mighty rage? Saw through a white curtain's shot a timorous ray, and opt those eyes that must eclipse the day. Now lapdogs give themselves the rousing shake, and sleepless lovers, just at twelve, awake, thrice rung the bell, the slipper knocked the ground, and the pressed watch returned a silver sound. Belinda still her downy pillow pressed, her guardian self prolonged the balmy rest, twas he had summoned to her silent bed the morning dream that hovered o'er her head. A youth more glittering than a birth night bow, that even in slumber caused her cheek to glow, seemed to her ear his winning lips to lay, and thus in whispers said, or seemed to say, Am person quo, fairest of mortals, thou distinguished care of thousand bright inhabitants of air. If ere one vision touch thy infant thought, of all the nurse and all the priest have taught, of airy elves by moonlight shadows seen, the silver token, and the circled green, or virgins visited by angel pal single quotares, with golden crowns and wreaths of heathen leaf flow single quotares, hear and believe. Thy own importance know, nor bound thy narrow views to things below. Some secret truths from learned pride concealed, to maids alone and children are revealed, what though no credit doubting wits may give? The fair and innocent shall still believe. Know then, unnumbered spirits round thee fly, the light militia of the lower sky. These, though unseen, are ever on thig, hang o'er the box, and hover round the ring. Think what an equipage thou hast an air, and view with scorn two pages and a chair. As now your own, our beings were of old, and once enclosed in woman's beauteous mood. Thence, by a soft transition, we repair from earthly vehicles to these of air. Think not, when woman's transient breath is fled, that all her vanities at once are dead. Succeeding vanities she still regards, and though she plays no more, o oh, er looks the cards. Her joy in gilded chariots, when alive, and love of Imbra, after death survive. For when fair in all their pride expire, to their first elements their souls retire, the sprites of fiery termagants and flame mount up, and take a salamander's name. Soft yielding minds to water glide away, and sip with nymphs, their elemental tea. The graver prude sinks downward to ignum, in search of mischief still on earth to roam. The light coquettes and sylphs sloth repair, and sport and flutter in the fields of air. No further yet. Whoever fair and chaste rejects mankind, is by some sylph imbracked, for spirits, free from mortal laws, with ease assume what sexes and what shapes they please. What guards the purity of melting maids, in courtly balls, and midnight masquerades, safe from the treacherous friend, the daring spark, the glance by day, the whisper in the dark, when kind occasion prompts their warm desires, when music softens, and when dancing fires. Tis but their sylph, the wise celestials know, though honor is the word with men below. Some nymphs there, too conscious of their face, for life predestined to the gnomes embrace. These swell their prospects and exalt their pride, when offers are disdained, and love denied, then gay ideas crowd the vacant brain, while peers, and dukes, and all their sweeping train, and garters, stars, and coronets appear, and in soft sounds your grace salutes their ear. Tis these that early taint the female soul, instruct the eyes of young coquettes to roll, teach infant cheeks a bidden blush to know, and little hearts to flutter at a bow. Oft, when the world imagine women stray, the sylphs through mystic mazes guide their way, throw all the giddy circle they pursue, and old impertinence expel by new. What tender maid but must a victim fall to one man's treat, but for another's ball? When Floria speaks, what virgin could withstand? If gentle Damon did not squeeze her hand? With varying vanities, 
From every part, they shift the moving toy shop of their heart. Where wigs with wigs, with sword knots sword knots strive, bow banish bow, and coaches coaches drive. This erring mortal's levity may call, O oh blind to truth. The sylphs contrive it all. Of these am I, who thy protection claim, a watchful sprite, and Ariel is my name. Late, as I rang the crystal walls of air, in the clear mirror of thy ruling star I saw, alas. Some dread event impend, ere to the main this morning sun descend, but he even reveals not what, or how, or where, warned by the sylph, O oh pious maid, beware. This to disclose is all thy guardian can. Beware of all, but must beware of man. Am person quo. He said. When Chalk, who thought she slept too long, leaped up, and walked his mistress with his tongue. Twas in, Belinda, if report say true, thy eyes first opened on a billet dew. Wounds, charms, and ardors were no sooner read, but all the vision vanished from thy head. And now, unveiled, the toilet stands displayed, each silver vase in mystic order laid. First, robbed in white, the nymph intent Adares with head uncovered, the cosmetic pow single quo Atares. A heavenly image in the glass appears, to that she bends, to that her eyes she rears. This inferior priestess, at her altar's side, trembling, begins the sacred rites of pride. Unnumbered treasures up at once, and here the various offerings of the world appear. From each she nicely calls with curious toil, and decks the goddess with the glittering spoil. This casket India's glowing gems unlocks, and all Arabia breathes from yonder box. The tortoise here and elephant unite, transformed to combs, the speckled in the white. Here files of pins extend their shining rows, puffs, powders, patches, bibles, billet dew. Now awful beauty puts on all its arms. The fair each moment rises in her charms, repairs her smiles, awakens every grace, and calls forth all the wonders of her face. Sees by degrees a purer blush arise, and keener lightnings quicken in her eyes. The busy sylphs surround their darling care. These set the head, and those divide the hair, some fold the sleeve, whilst others plait the gown. And Betty's prayed for labors not her own.